Okay, teams. Okay, students. Chemistry today. Hello. Um, now, in the last four lessons, we did energetics. And we did about exothermic, endothermic. We did about different calculations. And there was one calculation which we haven't done properly yet. So we're going to start with that. And then we are going to move on to the moles concept. Okay. And the type of calculation we're going to do uh, just before we do the moles concept is the practical one which comes up in paper three, where we try to calculate the delta H, the enthalpy change when a reaction happens. Now, it's in paper three because sometimes you have to actually do the experiment, measure the temperatures with a thermometer, and then you have to do the calculation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remind you about that. And then we're going to do a calculation which is on the board behind me, which I will show you in just a minute. So the first thing you have to do in these is to work out Q. Q was the heat change. Uh, it's always negative if it's exothermic and positive if it's endothermic. Q was equal to the mass of water heated times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. That is Q equals MC delta T. Then to turn that into delta H, we had to do Q over N, where N was the number of moles of, for instance, in this case, ethanol burned. So let's have a look at the uh, thing behind me. I'm going to just go behind me. Here we are. OK, so we need to remember that Q equals M times C times delta T and delta H is Q over N. OK, that's how we do the calculation. Now, in this little experiment here, we have some ethanol here an alkanol here being burned. Look, hot flame. Wow, look at that. It is heating some water. The water is 100, deg uh, sorry, 100 grams. The C is 4.18. The temperature change is 56. It goes up by 56 degrees Celsius. And when it's measured afterwards, we find one gram of ethanol has burned. That's ethanol C2H5OH. Okay. The rams carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and oxygen is 16. You will need that to work out the moles of ethanol. Okay. So there's the calculation. Work out this first, M times C times delta T, that's always the mass of the water, times the specific heat of water, times the temperature change. I've worked that out for you. Then you put that number over the number of moles of ethanol which has been burned, one gram. And to work out moles, moles is grams over Rm. M. OK, have a go at that first. I hope you can see it all. I'll just see if I can see it all. Almost all. I'll just bring it down just a little bit. I'll tell you the top number there is 56. Sorry, it's the top number up here is 56 degrees Celsius. 100 grams, 4.18 for C, one gram of ethanol burns, the rams carbon is 12, hydrogen is one, oxygen is 16, and moles is grams over RMM. Have a go. Have a go. See if you can do it. There is the calculation. So work out Q first. Uh, 
Oh dear, Kibiro, I've got a problem. Kibiro, Kibiro, is this something that you are that you are not sure about at all? Hold it very still, please, Dandora. You're right about 46. Uh, down a bit, please. Oh, I missed Kibiro, uh, do you, uh, hang on, let me just go back to me just for a minute so you can see me. Kibiro, were you not at the last lesson? Were you not at the last lesson? Or were you at the last lesson, Kibiro? Okay. Um, it's not complicated. Okay. It's not complicated. I will go back to the board and I will show you how to do it when people have had a go. I, I will help you in a minute, Kibiro. Mathari Mixed, most of you were here, so there are the numbers. You can do this. Glory, we just need to multiply to start with the mass of water. Hello, Wamawini. How nice to see you. Um, the mass of water times the number, which is 4.18, the specific heat capacity of water, times the temperature change, which is 56. That will give me Q. That's the amount of heat which went into the water. Then I have to divide that by the number of moles of ethanol. And it says here one gram of ethanol burns. So I'll be doing the calculation in just a minute to show you so you can see how to do it. But this is a calculation from last lesson. If you were not here last lesson, um, the recording should be available to you, I hope. Ah, maybe I didn't send it. I will make sure I have sent it. So we had three lessons on enthalpy on energetics right so who has uh, some answers has anybody got q yet anybody got q yet Yes, that's right, Dandora. Very good. What's your name, please? Uh, up a bit, please. Uh, oh, well done. Hey, very good. Um, somebody in Mathari was doing very well there. Got the right cue, but then divided by the wrong number of moles. A little bit closer, please, Glory. Uh, it's a little bit out of focus. It's a little bit out of focus. It's not focusing quite right. So Q, yes, well done, yes, well done, Glory, very good. Well, very good indeed, yes. Okay, so we've got that Q, most people who have shown me it have got it all right. Q, that's 100 times 4.18 times 56 comes out as 23408. 23,408. I will come to the board now and show you how to do the rest. Okay, I'm going to come to the board and show you how to do it. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of everything else so I can just remember what it is that is most important, which is this. So Q, that's the amount of heat, is equal, oops, sorry, wrong camera, my apologies, hang on. Yes, you are a bit faster. Yes, I know. Come on. Okay, Q equals M times C times delta. If you remember from heat, delta means change in temperature, okay? 
So that equals, we had 100 grams here. This is 4.18, and the temperature change was 56. And that equals 23408. What we have to do next is to divide that number by the number of joules um, of ethanol, uh, sorry, the number of moles of uh, ethanol. So I had one gram of ethanol. Ethanol is C2H5OH, and as some people worked out, this is 212, so that's 24, and 5, and 16, and 1, and that equals 46. So my number of moles will be 1 divided by 46. So I put this over 1 over 46. Now, the answer that comes out is not completely correct. So that's divided by 1 divided by 46. And the answer is 1076768, I think. No, that can't be right. I've got that wrong. Hang on. 23408 divided by 1 divided by 46. Oh, yes, no, that is right. Okay, so the answer there at the bottom there should be the answer which you got 1076768. Now, this is joules. And we want it in kilojoules. So I divide by a thousand. So that becomes 1076.8 kilojoules per mole. OK, I'm coming back to the other computer. Sorry, the other camera. So that's the answer. OK, did anybody get that? Did anybody work it out and find that number? Well done, Mathari. That's really, really good. Yes, Dandora, very good. Well done. Well done, Glory. Guys at the back, well done. Very, very good. Okay. So, yes, Silver Spring, do you want to show me? Or have you just written it down and now you want to show me? <laughs> Let me have a look. A little bit closer, please. And right in front of the camera, because the camera is a bit higher and to your right. Oh, nearly, nearly got it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. That is the third type of calculation for energetics. But today we're not doing energetics. Because I've recorded this, you will be able to see it later. And if you want to see the other sessions, the other lessons that we have had, on uh, energetics they are recorded and they should be sent to you and available to your supervisor or your teacher but today we're not doing that today we're going to do something different today we're going to talk about moles and a lot of you probably find moles a bit difficult how many people find moles easy how many people find it really hard how many people not entirely sure so easy Difficult, not sure. Okay, Silver Spring, mm, halfway in between. Mathari, not very happy. Wamuini, like this, some like that. Dandora, really. okay. <laughs> some people going, mm, maybe like this, maybe like this, maybe. Okay, Wamuini, I have your picture. I, I see you don't like it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, well done, Glory. I'm going to try to give you a way of understanding what moles are because a lot of people find moles puzzling very odd so i'm going to try to show you my way of doing it i'm going to go back to the other camera i'm just going to have to get rid of what it says on there but i'll explain my way of doing it
so let's say that we want um, we want to talk about moles and you don't know what a mole is but you know what happens in a reaction <coughs> and you may be able to understand what an equation tells you so I'm going to write an equation now the equation I'm going to write is methane burning in oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water there it is I hope you can see that okay there now what's wrong with this equation as it is what is wrong with this equation as it is what is wrong is that there is one carbon here on the left and one carbon here on the right and there are four hydrogens here and only two over here so two have disappeared this cannot be true two oxygens here three oxygens there so this equation is not balanced i balance it by going two here and two there now if i want to turn this into words i would say one molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen to make one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. Now, I hope you know that. I hope you can say you know that that is called a molecule, and that means we have two molecules of oxygen, one molecule of CH4, one molecule of CO2, two molecules of H2O. So if I said to you, uh, I have two molecules of methane, you should be able to go, well, one reacts with two, so one will react with, sorry, two will react with four. So two here would react with four of these, would give two of those and four of those. And how I do this with my, with my classes, I say, okay, let's not worry about what a mole is. Just watch this. I'm just going to go... Now it says one mole of CH4 reacts with two moles of O to give one mole of CO2 and two moles of H2O. In other words, if we talk in an equation about molecules, we just get rid of the Q bit and we get moles because a mole is just a big number. I'm coming back to the other, other uh, camera. That is a, an important idea. So if I said to you, um, I have a soccer team of 11 players, you would say, you don't need to tell me it's 11 players. I know a soccer team is 11 players. If I turn up with 200 players, most of them are not going to play. If I turn up with two players, we're going to lose. If I say you're going to turn up uh, to a rugby union team uh, and I say a rugby union team has 15 players, you don't need to be told it's 15. You don't need to be told basketball is five. You don't need to be told that doubles tennis needs two players. You turn up with three, they're going to say no. So a mole is just a very, very large number. That number is six with 23 zeros after it. It's just a number. We don't have to work out the actual numbers. We just talk about moles. So this is how we go. Here we go. One mole is 600,000 million, million, million. That is six times 10 to the 23. So I'm going back to my other camera.
if i had my one mole of c h four that means i have six times ten to the twenty three molecules of c h four i would have i'm going to leave it as twelve times ten to the twenty three i know it's one point two times ten to the twenty four but you understand what i'm doing that means i have six times ten to the twenty three here and 12 times 10 to the 23 here. You don't need to know those numbers. You need to know one mole, two mole, one mole, two mole. That's it. And then we have to work out how to turn moles into something we can actually measure physically. So that's what we're doing now. But a little quiz first. So you know that atoms are small, but I wonder how small things are. So molecules are small. Let's have a little quiz and let's see if you know the answer to a, a couple of bits and pieces. So I'm going to share my screen now and um, I'm going to try to show you this one. And it's saying how small is small. And for this, you're going to have to um, think yourself and talk with somebody else because there's three questions you need to work out um, the answers to. So here we are. So the first question is, which is the bigger number? Cans and bottles of Coke drunk per week or people on Earth? What do you think? Which is more? Which is the greater number? Talk with somebody else. Have a, have a think. What do you think? Is it cans and bottles of Coke drunk per week or people on Earth? OK, oh, I don't know. So I'm going to ask you to show me your number. Thumbs up is for Coke and down is for people. OK, do you think it's more? That's cans or bottles of Coke. Or do you think it's people on Earth? What do you think? Be courageous. Mathari think it's more people on Earth. Dandora girls are still not sure. Glory are thinking, oh, oh, there's a bit of a mixture there in glory. Some are saying one, some are saying. Silver Spring, what do you think? Do you think more cans of Coke or more people on Earth? What do you think, Silver Spring? Have some courage. It doesn't matter. OK, all right, here we go. And the answer is Coke wins. Oh, my gosh. There is more Coke drunk per week than there are people on Earth. There are about seven billion. Last time I counted seven billion people on Earth and only seven billion because there are 11 billion cans or bottles of Coke drunk per week. Can you believe that? That is ridiculous. We will have no teeth. OK, second question. You get the idea now. OK. Second question, which is more grains of sand on Earth or stars in the universe? Now, OK, we know that nobody has actually counted the grains of Earth, grains, of, grains of sand and nobody is capable of counting the stars in the universe. But we have a good estimate of both. So what do you think? Thumbs up for grains of sand, thumbs down for stars in the universe. OK, when were we need a definite about that? So stars, sorry, grains is thumbs up and stars is thumbs down. Let's have a look at some of the other schools. Oh, most people going for the stars in the universe. Most people going for the stars in the universe. Oh, Dandora girls are going for grains of sand. Oh, the universe wins. The universe wins because there are seven times 10 to the 21. Last time I counted. Look, I have seven times 10 to the 21 and one grain of sand because I just found another one. And the universe is 10 to, ten, seven times 10 to the 22. So there are more stars in the universe then there are grains of sand. Oh, wow, that is something. Here's the last question. Now, we know molecules are small, but are there more molecules in a glass of water 
or stars in the universe? Are there more molecules in a glass of water or stars in the universe? Thumbs up for molecules, thumbs down for stars. If you think like a glass of water is quite small, some people, some people are going for water, some people are going for stars. Okay, what do you think, Silver Spring? What do you think, Kibiro are going for star? Oh no, no, Kibiro are going for water and stars. That's quite a good idea. Okay, all right. Well, more people seems to be going for water, and the answer is water wins. In a 180 cubic centimeter or water mills glass of water, there are six times 10 to the 24. If you remember, it was seven times 10 to the 22 stars in the universe. In 180 mils of water, six times 10 to the 24. That is a ridiculous number. That is six million, 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 million. In fact, as it says here, there are more molecules in the one glass of water than there are glasses of water in all of the oceans on the Earth. What? That means if I measured out all of the oceans on the Earth in numbers of glasses, there are more molecules in one than there are glasses of water in the whole thing. Well, that's amazing. OK, so that means that particles, molecules are really small. And that means we need to talk in large numbers of them, which is why we have this mole, 6 times 10 to the 23. Now, what we need to do then is to be able to work out how to turn that into something we can actually measure. So this is how we do it. So this is a bit, if you're going to write anything down, this might be useful. So I'm going to share my screen. So, whoops. So this is about moles, and for some of you it may be a reminder, and some of you it may not be. So here we go. I have a way of teaching my students which works like this. So I say a mole is simply an amount of substance. It is that very, very big number, 6 times 10 to the 23. And then we talk about how we measure things out. We measure out the mass of a solid. We can measure the mass of a liquid or a gas, but we always measure out the mass of a solid. OK, that's the first one. That is my laboratory there. Ah, one day we will go there. So it's important to know that we can work out, we can measure out the mass of a liquid or a gas, but we always measure out the mass of a solid. In solutions, we work out the volume and the concentration. So there are two things to know about a solution. So mass of a solid and volume and concentration of solution. It's very important that you know you have to do both of those. You have to know both of them. If I said, well, if I made up a, a drink of uh, orange juice and I added some water to it, the amount of orange in it depends on not just the volume completely, but also about the concentration, how much water I add. So that is volume and concentration for solutions. And for gases, it is volume. We not normally measure it with something like a gas syringe, as in the picture here. OK, so solids, mass, solutions volume and concentration and gases volume now what i do with my class is i try to get them to remember in terms of triangles and i'll explain this on the board behind me but the way to remember this one is moles ram underground now i'll talk to you about that when i come off this particular screen so i'm going to come off this screen I'm going to go, I'm going to stop showing. I'm going to go back to my other board and I'm going to explain this idea.
Um, the easiest way of, to think about these triangles is the relationship triangles, is if I take a physics example. Uh, in physics, one of the most common ones is voltage, current and resistance. And they are related like this. If I want to find the current and I have the voltage and the resistance, you may know I just cover the current and it tells me it's voltage over resistance. If I want the resistance, it's voltage over current. If I want voltage, it's the current times the resistance. It's very simple. These relationship triangles work easily. Now, the first moles one is for masses of solids. Now we measure out the mass in grams. So grams is here, moles is here, and rams or RMMs, that's atoms or molecules, is there. So if I want to work out the moles of a solid, I cover moles and I know it's the grams over the RAM or the RMM. So if I had just one atom like Na, then it's a RAM. If I have two or more joined together, it's an RMM. OK, so hydrogen RAM is one, but because it goes around as two, RMM is two and so on. So this triangle is very important. Now, a lot of people think, how do I remember that? Well, one of my students came up with this idea. You probably know what a mole is outside chemistry. And it's a it's a little creature which burrows, burrows underneath the ground and it eats worms and stuff. And they ram their way through the ground. So this person said, look, moles ram under G for ground. Now, we know it's for grams, but if you can remember moles ram underground, you've got this. You've got moles ram under G for ground. Ah, OK, so I actually want to know that moles equals grams over ram or RMM. It doesn't matter. That's my triangle, which I have to remember. OK, so moles times RAM or RMM, whichever one it is here, under grams. So if I have moles and RAM, I can work out the mass it would be. If I want to work out the RMM and I have the grams and the moles, I put grams over moles and I can work out RMM. That's a very powerful triangle which will help you a lot. I'm going to go back to the computer. OK, so if you haven't already written that triangle down, I would because it's very useful. And there are two more triangles which I'm going to show you now. So there's the first one. Grams at the top, moles at the bottom and RAM or RMM, the molar mass, at the bottom. And we remember moles RAM underground as a way of remembering which way up this triangle goes. Now we need one for solutions. You won't be able to remember all this probably to start with, but we are going to do practice on them so it will become easy. So for solutions, Moles is up at the top. OK, moles is up at the top. Concentration is down at the bottom and the volume, which is normally in cubic centimetres, is divided by a thousand and is down at the bottom. So moles is at the top. Concentration and volume over a thousand is at the bottom. OK, so in other words, to work out the number of moles, I have to just multiply the concentration times the volume over a thousand. So I'm going to change, change my camera again. Let's just go back to the other camera. So 
So this time, I'm going to change the colour of this, it's not very easy. Moles at the, at the top, here is concentration, and here is volume over 1,000. So let's say I wanted to work out the moles, and I had a concentration and a volume. So moles equals, I just cover the one I want, concentration times volume over 1,000. So let's say the concentration is 2, and the volume is 25. Then I would go 2 here, 25 over 1,000, and the answer comes out as 0.05. OK, easy. Just put the numbers in and it will come out as the right answer. OK, back to the other camera. So you need to write that that triangle down. If you haven't already, as a way of remembering how to do it. So here it is again. OK, the volume has to be in cubic decimeters. So there it is. Moles at the top, concentration at the bottom times the volume in a thousand over a thousand. And for gases, because they're measured in a volume, it looks like this. Moles at the bottom. This is more like the first one. The thing that we measure, if, if you remember for the masses, it was mass at the top mass at the top, well this is cubic centimetres at the top, times 24,000 at the bottom. 24,000 is the number of cubic centimetres which one mole of gas takes up at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. If it was colder that would be smaller, the volume goes down when it gets cold. Okay, so that's the third triangle. Okay, um, <clears throat> so let's let's have a go at a couple of questions. OK, I'm going to give you a little bit of a time to work this out. This is using the first triangle where moles equals grams over RAM or RMM. And A is four grams of NaOH and the Rams are here. Na is 23, O is 16, hydrogen is one. Then 0 0.0055 grams of calcium carbonate. There's the, oh, sorry, I've missed. Oh, there's the oxygen above, yes. And one kilogram, a kilogram is obviously uh, a 1,000 grams of water. So just have a go at working out those, okay? Just see if you can work out using the masses triangle. It's asking in each case how many moles there are in that, okay? how many moles there are in each. So 4 grams of NaOH, 0 0.0055 grams of calcium carbonate, and 1 kilogram of water. And I'll give you the answers in just a minute. Remember the triangle. Moles equals grams over RAM or RMM. So you work out the RMM, NOH, CaCO3, H2O, and you put the mass over it. I'll just see you in just a moment, Mathari, just coming. Oh, where's the hand gone? Mathari, oh, hello. Oh, very good. Mathari has an answer. Dandora Girls has, no, this is too easy. Glory has an answer. That's really good. Everybody's got the first one right. Okay, that's brilliant. Well done, people. Well done, students. It's very, this is too easy for you. I can see that. What about the second one? 0 0.0055 grams of calcium carbonate. Can I see that again, Silver Spring, please?
up a bit up a bit left a bit sorry right a bit i can see your answer but i can't see your name i can see the first three letters of your name slide across a bit you got 0 0.01 that's really good uh, sorry 0 0.1 Okay, the answer to the first one is okay. What about the second one? Have we got the second one? Have a go at the second one. The second one was, I'll share you, I'll share it again. Here we go. There it is. 0 0.0055 grams of calcium carbonate and one kilogram of water. Have a go at both of those. Don't bother sharing me showing me either yet. Have a go at both of those and let's see how you're getting on. I'm impressed so far. The, the answer to the first one is 0 0.1 moles. 0 0.1 moles. Okay, let's see if anybody's got the answers. Oh, sorry, I missed that. I didn't see your... Uh... Hold still. <laughs> Dan... Dandora. Oh, all right, okay. Uh... Okay, Silver Spring, reckon... Uh, is that 5.5 times 10 to the minus 3? Yes, 5.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Kabiro, Silver Spring and Kabiro agree. Uh, Mathari reckons 0 0.4055, which is much as 5 times 10 to the minus 5, Dandora. And that is time, time, times 10 to the minus 5, Mathari. Kabiro, I think 5.5 times 10 to the minus 5? Yep, uh, not to the 0 0.5, to the minus 5 there, glory. But that's very good. Well done. Good. And the third one, which is one kilogram of water. One kilogram of water, that's 1,000 grams of water. Oh, Kibiro, it is pretty tiring being there, isn't it? 55.56 uh, M uh, could well be the right answer, Dandora. That's large. That's large. Silver Spring holds still. 55.56M. Ah, okay. Let's have a look. Okay. It was one kilogram of water. Show me, Kibiro. Uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, let me see your calculation again. Can I see your calculation again, please? Uh, no, it's one kilogram. That's one thousand. Oh, sorry, you've got one thousand grams. One thousand over eighteen is not zero point zero one eight, is it? You've got your calculator the wrong way up. So that's one thousand divided by eighteen. Yes, one thousand divided by eighteen. Okay, we're going to share the answers. So we can move on. Here we go. And the answers are. Here go the answers. OK, in the first one, four grams over 40 is 0 0.1 moles. Uh, moles is 0 0.0055 over 100 because calcium carbonate is 100. So it's 0 0.4 zeros and 56 or 5.6 times 10 to the minus 5, which you all got. One kilogram is a thousand grams, so it's a thousand over eighty-eight, which is fifty-five point five six moles, which was first got by Dandora Girls. Everybody did really well. So let's have a quick go at just A here for concentrations and volumes. Okay. Concentrations and volumes. This is for solutions. So how many moles are there in 25 cubic centimeters of 0 0.5? moles per cubic decimeter that's the concentration 0 0.5 
and the volume is 25. Remember to divide by 1000. So I think you can work it out. Twenty five cubic centimeters, zero point zero five, zero point zero. Sorry, what have we got as an answer? Anybody got an answer? Anybody got an answer yet? It's smaller than one. Uh, not 20. No, not 20. Um, you, ha you have to be very careful. Yes, well done, Dandora. You have to be careful about how you work this out. Well done, Dandora. Who's that? What name, please? So it is, let me just show you the question again and just remind you of something. Um, this is the, this is there. Here it is, moles is concentration times volume over a thousand. In this one, moles is at the top. So moles equals concentration times volume over a thousand. And the calculation is if it's 25 cubic centimeters and 0 0.5 as the concentration, then what is the answer? So it's going to be, ah, well done, Silver Spring. Well done, Silver Spring. Come, Mathari. Nice one. Well done. Well done. Very good. Yes. And Glory. Yes. Glory, I've got it. Yes. Okay. Everybody's getting it. I'm really impressed. I am very impressed. Okay. So let's try B. Let's try B. So the answer for that one is. Let me just go to the proper page so the first one here moles equals 25 over a thousand times 0.5 and that came out as uh, 0 0.0125 0 0.0125 now in this second one we've got to work out first the number of gra the number of moles here now that's a bit more complicated and that is quite a lot harder um 3.65 grams so what i want you to do first is i want you to work out how many moles of hcl that is okay how many moles of hcl is 3.65 grams i'll tell you that hydrogen weighs one and chlorine weighs uh 35.5 so that means that the moles is 3.65 over the RMM. So let me show you how you do this. 3.65 in 250. So I'm going to go back to the other camera. Okay. Wow. Hey. <laughs> well done. Who is that? Okay, so here's my other camera. That's really good. Well done. So here's my other camera. So for for this is the solutions one and they're asking what the concentration is and they tell me that the volume here they've given me that but they haven't given me this so they told me it was 3.65 grams well if it's grams for solids moles if i've got a mass moles equals grams over rmm that's 33.65 over 36.5 which equals 0.1 now if you've got the volume here which is 250 you should be able to work out the concentration here 
and somebody's already got it which is amazing i'm going to go back to the other to the other camera dan dora girls who was that who worked that out come on show me your name don't be big-headed come on come on come on dan dora show me your name kezia kezia you are going to do very very well in chemistry okay so <clears throat> i'm going back to the other camera <coughs> oh wow silver spring oh uh two times um no uh, uh well done silver spring mathari you have to get the triangles the right way up the the um the mass the moles goes at the top and the volume at the bottom ian 0.04 close close Masari, very close. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look because we're starting to run out of time a little bit. 0 0.04 from Glory. Let's have a look. 0 0.913. Oh, you've done something very... Oh, I see what you've done. Um, the 3.65 is not the concentration, Mathari. It's very important that we get this the right way around. So I'm going to share my screen and show you the answer. Okay, so the first one was easy because in A, um, the second triangle, that's the one for concentrations, moles is concentration times volume over a thousand. That was easy because the mole, um, the concentration was 0 0.5. We multiply, multiplied it by 25 over a thousand and it came out as 0 0.0125. And almost all the people who wrote their answers and showed it to the screen got it right, which was amazing. The second one is more difficult. The, in that triangle, it tells me that moles at the top equals concentrations at the bottom times volume. Now, in the question, as it says in the first purple box here, we're given the volume, but not the moles. So we have to find the moles first. We have a mass of HCl. OK, so we use the first triangle moles equals mass over RMM. And the RMM of uh, HCl is 36.5. So moles is 3.65 over 36.5, which is 0 0.1. Now, the, the, the volume is 250. And 250 over 1,000 is 0.25. So the concentration is 0 0.1 over 0 0.25 which comes out as 0.4. Let's just look at that on the other board. Just look at that on the other board. <clears throat> so let's go back. I'll make this easier to see, possibly. So here we are. This is the solution triangle. Concentration is here. Volume over 1,000 is here and moles is here and they asked me to find concentration so my concentration is equal to the moles over volume over 1000 now the moles they haven't given me the moles they've given me a mass ah with a mass i can use the first triangle so the first triangle, whoops, my board is falling off. The first triangle told me that moles ram underground. Is that clear to you? Yes. So if I want moles, it's grams over RMM. That was 3.65 over 36.5. That's 0 0.1. So I know that the moles up here is 0 0.1. And I know that my volume down here was 250. So it's 250 over 1,000, which is 0 0.25. So concentration equals 0 0.1 
over 0 0.25. Okay, that's how it works. Okay, let's go back to the, the sharing. We've nearly finished. So this is quite complicated. If you, if you are one of those people who got this right, I am very, very impressed. Really very, very impressed. Now we're going to do some of these volumes of gases ones next time. Okay, they're, they're fairly straightforward. Um, we'll, we'll do that. But I want to show you the sort of question which comes up this is i've retyped this but this is a proper um uh kcse question and it says the student started with 0 0.1 grams of magnesium adds it to this a match of sulfuric acid and you had to work out which was in excess so you have to work out the moles of mg the moles of h2so4 then you had to work out how many moles of hydrogen is produced and then the volume which that takes up this uses all three triangles but let's go right back to the beginning okay masses for solids masses of anything will be worked out in the same way volume and concentration of solution and volume of a gas. The first triangle is for masses. If you are ever given a mass, the grams go at the top, moles go at the bottom, and the RAM or the RMM, which you will be given, goes at the bottom. In the solutions, the moles go up to the top. There's the moles at the top. Concentration times volume over a thousand is at the bottom. So if I want moles, moles will equal, I just cover up the moles, concentration times volume over a thousand. If I were you, when you're working with volume over a thousand, I wouldn't go, let's say we're looking for concentration. Concentration equals moles over volume over a thousand. It is tempting to go moles over volume over a thousand is the same as moles times a thousand over volume. I wouldn't do that. I'd work out the moles separately, then I would work out the volume over a thousand, and then I'd put them together. And finally, the gas triangle is this one here. It's a bit like the first one because the moles are down the bottom, and the thing that we're measuring, grams in the first triangle, cubic centimeters in this one, the volume of a gas, it goes over this, and this is something you will be given. You never have to remember this. You do not have to remember it. Okay? All right. So, I know that's quite hard, but I'm trying to get you so that you can use the three triangles. And next time we will do some calculations, and I will hope to show you a little experiment so you can see what happens uh, when it is done. And uh, hopefully it will make sense to you. But now uh, it's nearly time to go. If anybody has any questions, I will hang on. I don't want to go any further into it because it gets more complicated. And you have done very, very well. Um, just, uh, just be amazed by this. Uh, where is it? I think this is the most extraordinary idea. If there are six million, 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 million molecules of water in a glass of water, just imagine how many there are in you. And if we measured all of the oceans into glasses and we saw how many glasses there were, you would imagine that would be so many that you could not even write down the number. But actually, there are more molecules in one glass than there are glasses of water in all the oceans. How many molecules? I give you a, a challenge. If you are 60% water, how many molecules of water are there in you? That's a challenge for you. So it's uh, the, the grams of water, which is 60%. 
times your mass divided by 18. Have a go sometime. You'll be quite shocked. You contain a lot of water molecules. Okay, it's time to go. I'm going to stop recording.